Well, welcome to Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zoratustra, and today is August 21st. I'm broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to mute all the, um, uh, everybody because devices make funny noise. And those of you who are viewing from uh, Facebook or Instagram, I'm not able to answer your questions. So if you want me to communicate with you, you need to sign up through my website, zaratustra.tv. And, um, and then that way we give you a link and you come on our system and then we can communicate with each other. But I appreciate you being with us and uh, viewing the uh, webinar. Uh, as always, what we're going to do is we're going to do a 15-minute meditation. It's a silent meditation. Um, and what I'm asking you to do is simply divert your attention inwards, shifting your attention inwards to where the source of yourself is, to where the thoughts arise. Go to that place. Before you have any thoughts, before your thoughts arise, what's prior to them? And just bring your attention to that area. And don't struggle with this. Just do it very um, easy without any kind of effort, effortless. And simply bring your attention inwards. Take a deep breath and relax. You don't need to do any kind of mantras. No need to do any kind of visualization because you activate your thinking mind and it takes you away from what we're trying to do. It must be effortless. You're simply shifting your focus from the objects, which is thoughts, emotions, and whatever's happening outside. And then you bring your attention within to the source. Very simple, very easy, and effortless. And go ahead and we move on. Uh, Shishi, I'm going to play some music. And if the music sounds funny, just wave at me and I'll disconnect it, okay? All right. not quite translating and <clears throat> might be distracting to people. Okay, thanks.
slowly, slowly come back. Okay, so I would like to share with you today about our, um, our relationship with our story and um, how much we're attached and ruled by our own story. And we all have our own story. But majority of people on the planet, they're not aware that they're completely lost in the, this story of me and poor me or whatever it is. Uh, whether it's a victory and there's great pride of this me who has accomplished this and that and I'm so good and I'm so mighty and look at me and, and um, blaming other people or having this feeling of superiority over other people or uh, over their children or their partner and wanting to compare everybody else to themselves um, and feeling superior or the other way around and um, feeling inferior and uh, being a victim, and because this or that has happened in my life, and I'm like this, or like that. So, and this is the part that if you want to advance and you want to go to a higher levels of consciousness, uh, we, we need to look at it and become really aware of it, is my story, your story, and see how much you dwell in it, how much you live in this story, and that's where the self-awareness mechanism kicks in. Uh, as the spiritual seeker, it goes more deeper within themselves and they get more advanced and they begin to evolve. They start to recognize or they're available and ready for this kind of teachings, and which is looking at our own story and seeing that how much you are lost into it and how much importance you give to it. Uh, number one is, let's just like a look at it. So, of course, you have a past, you lived from the time you were born, and you've gone through all these different series of events in your life. Some people are more fortunate, some more, some less. Uh, some of us have gone through some dramatic experiences in our lives, a lot of ups and downs. Some maybe had a smoother ride. Uh, some of us feel like we've been a victim and, and uh, the world is treating us uh, very viciously and um, we've been cheated, we've been screwed over, we've been uh, abandoned, we've been pushed uh, pushed around and we carry this story with us so let's dissect this and take a look at it in different sections of it and we'll go forward um, one is that first of all this life story that you have that I have is where is this life story is it in a you know in a package does it you know it's like a package you carry this package with you is it a physical package? Is it written somewhere? Did somebody write it down for you somewhere? Or it's uh, merely thought and memory? Is it only in your mind 
or it's written somewhere. And obviously, it's not written anywhere. It's, it's in your mind. It's in, uh, stored in your memory. And how much of your memory is right? How much your mind works well and you can remember everything from your past, your past history? How much do you remember? How much do you remember about 30 years ago? 20 years ago, your childhood, how much of it? You have an idea of things have happened, but if you go back in time, you can't remember the details. Do you remember what kind of silverwares and what kind of plates you had uh, in your kitchen when you were seven or eight years old? What color they were? Um, do you remember what the kitchen in your house looked like? Do you remember what kind of um, uh, bedding and set setup you had in your bedroom? Do you remember the color of your bedroom when you were seven years old? How much do you remember of your past? We have an idea of some events, and mostly we refer to the events that happen. Uh, we remember it things that have traumatized us. Uh, we do remember some moments that something profound happened and, and uh, you reached somewhere, you did something, you graduated, um, those kind of things, or you fell in love, your first love. Do you remember your third boyfriend or girlfriend, the fifth one that you were with? Or you just remember the main one? How much of it do we remember? And if you look back, especially when you're looking at the old pictures or old videos, and you go back through your pictures, you're looking at them, and all of a sudden you remember, oh, wow, I remember this. Oh, wow, this. I forgot about this one. So if you go back to your past and examine it and check, check it out, uh, and then you're comparing this with your brother, with your friend, with your mom, your dad, your your partner, you're going to realize that your stories are not really matching. And sometimes they're completely opposite. Like you're, let's say you have a, um, a reunion with uh, your friends from high school and or college, and 20 years, 30 years has gone by. Uh, you get together, you're having a drink. This is your 10-year uh, anniversary of high school reunion and you're hanging out together and you're talking about an event. You're talking about, do you remember that we were that night in such and such bar? We used to go there and we were drinking and get crazy and have fun and dance. And, uh, oh, you remember Sally, you jumped over, you were so drunk on tequila and you jumped on the bar and you were dancing like crazy and you know, you pull your top off or da 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 da. Some profound story, funny story, stupid, or whatever the story was. And then everybody has a different version of it. Somebody with Sally will say, no, it wasn't me, it was Jane. Jane will say, no, it wasn't me, it was Julie. And if you pay attention, you will realize that nobody has the same story and nobody really remembers exactly what happened except their own version of the story. So now, four people sitting together, everybody has a different version of the story. And so let's see, did it really happen? Did that thing really happen? And if it happened, what's the real? real story. No one really remembers it. Is there a record of it? Is it, is it, you know, maybe you say, oh, it's in the Akasha records, but let's put the Akasha records away, okay? And, and let's be practical with our daily uh, um, efforts of practical life stuff. Number one, who cares what really happened? That was 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Secondly, what did really happen? Nobody really remembers it. Did it really happen? So if you look back, you realize that this story is basically in your memory. It's 
most probably been tainted and it's changed from its original um, uh, event that has happened. And, and on the other hand, also, who cares? Now, let's go to our story. Sometimes it's very difficult to look at our own story, but uh, because we're so invested in it and we're so consumed by the story of me, 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 uh, I'm so important, I'm so significant, or what, whatever that is, but how much do you care about your story of someone else? And let's start with people who are, um, let's, let's start with someone who's close. How much do you know their story? How much do you know your partner's story? How much do you know your children's story? How accurate is your uh, information about your parents, their story? And these are people close to you or your children, whatever it is. They're very close to you. But if you go outside of this circle a little bit further in each direction, how much do you care about your best friend or one of your friends? And let's say now we're not dealing with people very close to us, friends. How much do you care about their story? Do you sit down and dwell on their story? Do you spend time thinking about their story, what happened to them 10 years ago, five years ago, I mean, do you care? Who cares? I mean, how much of your time goes into paying attention of somebody else's story? You, you don't pay, you don't put any attention, you don't put any time into dwelling in someone else's story. Now, I'm not talking about a celebrity and you're following somebody and you're really consumed by what's going on with them. And that even is not accurate because you're just getting information based on the media because you're not in their lives. And you don't know some celebrity what is really happening with them. You're not in, in their, their life to understand it. But, that, but basically, when we're talking about me and my friends around me, I am really consumed and with my own story, whatever that is. And everybody else says, I hear something, but I don't pay much attention unless it's affecting me in some way and has an impact on me. But if it doesn't have an impact on me, it basically comes in and just goes out. So... That's the number one thing. I would like you to spend time and attention, pay attention and look at it and use this as a way of recognizing of how much during the day or during the week your mind is occupied with the me story and how much of this story is real. And then the traps that we, as basically a society, fall into. There's different things. How many people have you met or how many times in your life you've been at this place that you are so consumed by events that have happened to you and, or your fears about the past or your regrets of the past that you regretting about this has happened, that has happened. I didn't do this. I should have gone to this school. I should have accomplished this or that. Or you're bl either you're blaming yourself or you're blaming somebody else for something they've done. And if you're not doing these kind of things yourself, how many people do you know are they in your family, they're close to you, or you come across friends that they are so trapped into their past? 
and they're not free. They're constantly dwelling in that world, either admiring themselves from the past or they're blaming themselves or they're doing it to other people and they, they can't just let it go. And I'm sure you have come across people like that and you've dealt with that. And you may have been one of those people yourself or maybe you are one of them. Anyway, but you wanna take a look at it. And then how much of your time do you spend if, in the future of what's gonna happen to me? What's gonna happen 10 years from now to my kids? What kind of world are we gonna have? I am so worried about the 5G technology that in the next 10 years, we're all gonna die from cancer because 5G is evil. I'm so worried about that in five years or 10 years from now, we don't have any good air, uh, air to breathe. Our water is gonna be polluted. The corporation is gonna take over. The population of Earth is gonna triple. How much do you go into the future and worry about it or projecting into it that whatever, whatever you're concerned with? You wanna look at yourself and you really want to pay attention to this. And you will catch yourself that your mind is swinging in between these two places. It goes from the past into the future. And another thing is that the future that we go in our mind, we go to that place is doesn't really, isn't it coming from your own past? What is future? When you worry about future. Aren't you coming, bringing something from the past and projecting it into a possibility in the future? You're worried about your daughter that, okay, she's 13 years old and what's gonna happen to her when she's 25? So what are you doing? You're bringing a concern and you're projecting it into the future. The concern's coming from what? It's coming from your past. Something has happened to you, something that you have experienced and now you're projecting it into the future. So, so all kinds of future projections are merely coming from our past. And if you're really present in this moment, then there is no future. I mean, where is the future anyway? Is there such a thing as the future or even such a thing as the past? Does it really exist? Or it's just a game the mind is playing. It's a projection of the mind. Where, what past? How much of it is real? How much of it is recorded? How much of it is accurate? It's only based on your memory and your memory is fading very quickly. So we don't even know that. Then the future, where does the future happen? When finally the future comes, where are you? You are in here, here and now, right now. It's always right now. So we're talking about right now in five minutes. But in five minutes, when you arrive to, to that, where are you? You're right now again. You're always right now. It's always here. You can't go, you can, in a way you can see it's one dimensional because you can't go anywhere else outside of right now, even if you time travel, you still time travel in right now. It's always happening right now. And if you're worrying about your past, 
it's happening. I mean, if you have regrets about your past, it's happening right now. Right now is the only reality we have. Right now is the only thing we have. Here and now. Here and now is the only thing exists, the only thing has ever existed, and is the only thing would ever exist. Here and now. Why is it so difficult for us to accept this. Why is it so difficult to accept that here and right now is the only thing that there is? And there's nothing else. The rest of it is a projection of the mind. Now, let's go a little deeper because it's been my experience as a teacher that, that I come across a lot of people and they're very consumed by their story, okay? The, the story, okay? They've been possessed by an entity, some kind of spirit or evil entity has taken them over or they have their victim how many of us are victims, been victims, or we've gone into this victim place, or we go to this victim place that we've been cheated, we've been screwed over by a partner, by a vicious partner, whether it's in a love relationship area or it's business relationship, or it's the parents. Oh, my, my mom was very abusive. My mom is very angry and she was always yelling at me or my dad was always yelling at me and that's why I am like that. And I'm angry and I'm yelling at other people. Uh, my parents abandoned me and I'm dealing with this abandonment issue. I've been sexually abused, and uh, so I have a lot of issues around sexuality. I've been always shut down by my parents, and whatever is the story, the story keeps going. I can tell you a million different variations, and I'm sure you can add up a lot of different variations of stories to it too. But there's a way that you can really free yourself from your story and you can free yourself from this victim thing that we we all have suffered from it or we still do suffer from it is a is the awareness consciousness awareness comes light comes into the darkness but before I go any further, I have to understand that at one point in your life, you have to take responsibility. At one point in your life, you have to say to yourself, enough is enough. And I want to go beyond this loop, this loop that the mind plays, this loop that the mind takes you to the past or takes you to the future. And you buckle up and you shape up and you say, okay, I want to be free. I want to become free of my story. Whatever is your story is, you know, whatever is your story. Maybe your story is a financial story that you're always broke. You never make it. Maybe your story is physical that you don't, you never get healthy and you're never in shape. Uh, Maybe your story, you know, is about relationship. Um, I never find the partner I want or everybody, everybody seems like 
you know, they take me for granted or whatever is the story. The, the story, the content of the story is in, unimportant. It's only important to you. But nobody else really cares about it. So, which remind me to talk about this, this part of the story is important to you and no one cares about it. If I forget about it, just remind me because it's very important to really uh, become aware of this. But let me talk about the victim story. Talk about that things have happened to you. Now, when you, when the awareness comes, when you finally get to this point that you're like, enough is enough, and I want to become free, is the first step that you arrive, and which is a very, very big step that finally the self awakening, self realization me mechanism has kicked in. And there's an awareness that this awareness from projecting to the outside, looking at, I'm just giving an example. Up to this moment, this awareness is looking outside and blaming, for example, Donald Trump for everything which is wrong in the world, Bra blaming your local government or the Illuminati or the evil corporations for every, anything is wrong, blaming the big corporations for bringing 5G, uh, bl blaming big corporations for polluting the water, polluting the ocean and everything, the air, uh, oil companies that manipulating and creating a lot of wars, all of these things. And I'm not saying this; these things do not exist or they don't happen. Um, but that's not the subject of what I'm talking about. The subject of what I'm talking about is for the person blaming the world for everything which is wrong. So the attention is on the other world. And then when the self-awakening mechanism starts to kick in and you start to become aware of yourself, which is and your attention starts to divert inwards, which is a huge part of your ev evolutionary awakening, is that you finally are willing or somehow through the grace of God existence, you are starting to look at yourself and paying attention and stop blaming everything else and really looking at yourself and seeing that, okay, maybe, maybe something's wrong with me. Maybe my point of view is wrong. Maybe I'm not looking at this correctly. Maybe there is something I need to learn that I keep facing all these things. And that's a major transformation. That's a major switch in that moment that you come to this place, that you're willing to examine yourself for the first time in your life and not pointing finger at other people or other circumstances. No matter how righteous you feel it is, and no matter how much you feel that you've been screwed. And you have been cheated. I'm not saying that, has hap that hasn't happened. You have been betrayed. Somebody lied to you. You got married to someone and they cheated on you or they stole from you. I'm not saying those stories do not happen, but what I'm saying is how do I free myself from this circumstance forever and not stay a victim and stalk into the story of my life? Because ultimately the bottom line comes to you and your happiness. 
Do you want to be happy and free? Or you want to stay in this loop and suffer? Obviously, you don't have a power to change the world. Because if you had it, you would have done it by now. I don't know how good of a job you would have done. But if you could change things, you would have done it. If you could use your power of your imagination or whatever power, you're an almighty powerful being and you will that all evil corporation stop dumping chemical uh, waste into the rivers and you would have done that. You would decide that the 5G technology would be banned and you would do it. You would decide that we have a complete democratic system on the planet and people vote and people work for people and greed would disappear. You would have done that. I know you have good intentions. You would do it. But obviously you don't have that power to implement and force your will on others and other circumstances in the world. So... <clears throat> Since that power doesn't exist, so why don't we look inside? See, maybe we have the power to do something inward rather than outwards. So this is a major point in our lives when we come to this understanding or we come to the possibility that maybe I should look here. Now, let's look here. Let's look inside. So I can only speak from my own experience and what has come to me and my own self-realization in this area. That's all I can do. Maybe it helps you, maybe it doesn't. But I'll share it with you. Is the way I learned to look at it as I realized that, first of all, I refuse to be the victim. Absolutely. 100%, no matter what happens in life, I am not a victim. No matter how much I'm being cheated, how much I'm being betrayed, whatever it happens, I refuse to be the victim. A, number one. B, how do I refuse to be a victim? What tools do I use? What what how have I changed my consciousness and my view of looking at life by doing that? Because, yeah, saying it is one thing, but living it and acting it and wa walking your talk is a different thing, okay? So how do I do that? Is, number one, is that any situation that happens any unfortunate situation that happens to me, and let's say I get into some kind of business partnership with someone and they, they cheat me, is I look at it that in the soul level, I had a contract with them. In the soul level, we made an agreement that we will arrive to the planet Earth, we'll be born here, and we're going to be living this life. And a part of being in the third D, third dimensional life, which is a dimension of duality, a dimension of the two opposites. And no matter what you do, you're going to deal with the opposites. There's the male, there's the female, there's the day, and there's the night. There's white, there's black. Everything has its opposites. And in this dimension of the duality, which also gives you the opportunity to evolve because suffering, hardship, heartbreak in this dimension exists, as well as love and bliss and oneness. All of them are here. So you get to swing into them and you get to experience all of it, which 
if you're mainly remaining into a 5D reality, which is a complete stillness and silence, then you don't get to experience these things that happen to a human being in, in a place, a dimension of duality. So the fact that we're here in this body, in this life, and we go through whatever we have to go through, that by itself is an indication that we need to learn, obviously, what is going on, what is happening to, our, to us in this life. whether you want to agree with this that you decided to come into this life or you just happen to pop into this we don't even need to go there into it that's another subject but let's say and this is how i like to view it is that i made an agreement that there's certain lessons I need to learn in this life for whatever reason, whatever reason. Now I come to this life and in this life, people who show up in my life and they cheat me and they steal from me or they hurt me. So what I do is I take the impact, obviously, I look at the experience and inwardly I you know I go through obviously if somebody has cheated me and they've stolen fifty thousand dollars from me and I'm really upset and I'm fuming for a while but when the fume goes down after the initial impact then the way I look at it is inwardly I say okay this was a good lesson I needed to learn this lesson because I was too naive. I was too careless. I was too trusting. Whatever it is, I had to go through this life lesson. And inwardly, I thank him. I thank that person that has come into my life and they cheated me and they taught me a valuable lesson that I needed to learn as a co-partner, as a co-creator, someone who agreed that they would come and play this role with me. Not an enemy, not someone outside of myself, not somebody separated from me, somebody who's of my own self, somebody who is a part of the oneness, not separation a mirror of myself because no one is separated from me. Everyone is a part of myself. Everybody is another image of me, another reflection of me. Do I need to hang out with them and go to a party or invite them to my house and have dinner after they screwed me? No. I don't need to see him ever again in my life. Do I need to walk up to them and tell them, hey, thank you for screwing me over and stealing $50,000 from me? I don't need to. But inwardly, I know that this was a part of the grand plan. And I had to learn this lesson. And in, inwardly, Within, I don't have an attachment or a charge on this story any longer because I know it was a contract. It was an agreement. Now you can just look at it. Your dad, your dad used to beat you up. He was angry, he was yelling at you guys. Or your mom was, or, or I don't know, mom was sexually abusive, verbally abusive. No matter what the story is, you want to go back to this story, look at it, see what you've learned from it. How does this story help you to evolve? 
how is it going to help you to go to the next level? Does it help you to be more compassionate? Does it help you to be aware that when you're raising children, you don't keep yelling and screaming at it? Is this going to help? Does it going to bring awareness from you for you that in your daily relationship, you need to pay attention to yourself, not to act from an anger space, angry space. Okay? So you want to look at the circumstance of what has happened because number one, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, you got se you were sexually abused or you got abandoned and that happened 20, 30 years ago and there's nothing you can do about it and nobody else besides you and maybe someone super close to you does give a hoot, does give a damn about your story because you don't give a damn about other people's stories you know, your best friend keeps coming to you and nagging about being abandoned in childhood. After a while, you're sick of the hearing the story. You don't want to hear it anymore. It's like, get over it, dude. Move on. So other people don't care about your story either. You're the only person who's possessed by it and giving it energy and deriving power from it you're the only one. No one else cares. As you don't care about other people's stories. It's very important for us to really become aware of this. Because this is a hindrance. This is something that's really keeping you away from going into the next level of your spirituality. It keeps you into this rut into this loop of reincarnation and you can just keep going round and round and round and round and then have this appearance of spirituality that you do yoga you do meditation you become vegetarian and you don't smoke and you don't drink but then you're dwelling into this past and then secretly you're dwelling into this victim part even though in appearance, you're pretending that you're very, very advanced, but you're not. Or you want to forgive your dad, but you can't. You want to forgive your mom, your friend, you can't. Well, the reason you can't, and it's not possible to do it, is because you first need to understand the concept. You need to understand what's up. And what's up is that you needed to go through these experiences because you incarnated in a human form, body to come in the third dimension, because you have to go to, and if these things have happened to you, just one moment, excuse me, I'm just gonna redo my, uh, Instagram. If these experiences do happen to you, whatever has happened, anything from the beginning of the time you remember to now, anything that has happened to you was exactly the way it was meant to be. It could have not been any other way. We can sit down and talk about possibilities that if I didn't do this, if I married this other person, if I did go to this medical school that I wanted to go, this would have happened, that would have happened. Yeah, those are all possibilities. And maybe in a parallel world, another version of you did this, but not in this one. You didn't do it. And you did exactly, perfectly what you had to do. And you're perfectly and exactly where you need to be right now. Here and now, 
with whatever has happened to you in your life, exactly this was the divine plan. Because you have no power to do anything outside of the divine will, outside of what existence and the spirit would like you to do because it's coming out of love. It's the experience you need to go through to help you evolve to your higher self. For whatever reason, that's what it is. Every single event that happens to you in your life is exactly the way is planned to be. For you to go through that experience and learn something from it. So our best way and the best attitude we can have in life to free ourselves from this loop of my story and poor me and this happened to me and I'm always broke and I'm always uh, not loved and na 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 all this story that your mind keeps playing and you know what I'm talking about because we all deal with it is the key is to turn the poison into medicine and that's where the shaman comes that's where the alchemist come that's where the awakened one comes that's where the intelligence come turning the poison into medicine turning this unfortunate victim story into a victorious story instead of being the victim you become the victor by shifting your awareness by shifting your attention your attention is the, the me who's unfortunate and got screwed to I chose to be in this situation in some level I don't understand all of it but I needed to learn this and thank you Mr. Abusive Miss Abusive for teaching me, co-creating with me, so I could learn what I needed to learn. Because I am going to use this as fuel to my fire to rise above and open my wings and even be a better human being and more compassionate. And I'm not a victim. That was one of the lessons in my life I had to learn. And that's how you turn the poison into medicine. And you free yourself from the story, my story. It's not difficult. You can do it. You just have to decide to do it and actually do it. Every day, every circumstance you come across, you, after the fume is gone, a couple of days go by, you look back at it, learn the lesson you needed to learn, and refuse to be a victim and move on. And you will see how your life will transform because you free yourself from this web, this vicious web. Anybody has any questions? We have about seven, eight minutes left. If you do, you can wave at me. Again, those of you who are with me on Facebook or Instagram, I can't really answer your questions because uh, it's too much for me to deal with a bunch of different uh, phones and computers uh, screens. So I just basically, if you're part of the academy, 5D Academy, um, which you can join in. We're broadcasting every week on Wednesdays, and you're welcome to uh, join us through my website, zaratustra.tv, and uh, 
then I can communicate with you directly. You can look, you can see me, I can see you, and you can write to me or ask me questions. I think Anita Hafiz has a question. She had her hand up. Yes. Okay. Do you do you have her uh, uh, unmuted? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. I have a question. Uh, I understand very well. We should learn from the bad situation in our lives, and we make the poison. Uh, um, to the to the medicine, yeah. But what I'm thinking, I have been thinking all the time, is uh, uh, we had situations in the past in the childhood, and we got a psychological problem with that. And this is going through five decades in our years, uh, and we are suffering from this. Uh, you understand what I mean? How can we uh, uh, cope with that? Uh, tell me the last part of it. I didn't. I didn't quite understand. So, so what I mean is, uh, um, we have in the uh, we have problems in our childhood from the parents, for example. Yes, and of course we learn something from these situations, and we turn the uh, uh, poison to the medicine. But what we will do? What can we do if we have mental problems from this behavior from before, from this suffering, and still? Yeah. After five decades, still you have this problem. So carrying with you, what can we do with that? Well, obviously that we're going to be shaped, uh, all of us, in a different way. Uh, we're going to be shaped from the experiences and events that happen in our lives from childhood. We all have already shaped in a certain way. And we all have our own story. So once you're shaped in this way, it's like a tree is growing and you have tied the tree in a certain way that as it's growing, it's bending to the right or yeah. in a certain way. Now it's grown and 30 years have gone by. Now you can't push the tree to be straight. So that's over. So there's yeah. nothing you can do about that. Okay. Yeah. Right. But what you just saying right now your your awareness mechanism has already kicked in that means you are aware of those psychological patterns okay. if you weren't aware of it you wouldn't be able to tell me about it right now okay. that means you can see it right okay there's an awareness you are aware that in your childhood something happened psychologically and created some damage. Uh -huh. okay? yeah. I'm just using easy terms uh -huh. for, sim for simplicity of the conversation. So you say you're aware something happened in your childhood. Your parents did something which all of us have gone through it. You're not the only one, okay? No, no, yeah, no. yeah. All of us gone through things because our parents, they didn't go to a Buddhist school or school of meditation. No, they and, didn't, no. <laughs> and they were unconscious and they did some, and their, our, our, their parents were unconscious too and they came from this very rigid or whatever, yeah. whether it was a, Islamic background or Irish Catholic or Roman Catholic or Jewish conditioning or whatever it was and whatever conditioning uh, screwed up things happened to them to uh, then they transferred it to you mm -hmm. and they did it to you based on whatever they learn because nobody goes to this parental school of to be how to be parents we don't have that yet, unfortunately. But so that there's nothing you can do about it, but you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. Now, but your question is very valid of what do I do? Well, awareness. You are aware of some kind of psychological disorder, right? You're aware of it. Can, can you? 
Is, are you? Let me see if you're unmuted. Yeah, you're unmuted. I, I, I can hear you. I can understand also very right. well. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page together. Uh -huh. You are aware of some damage that happened to you psychologically in childhood. Uh -huh. So yeah. but the awareness, there is the awareness. The awareness is aware of this thing that has happened. Uh -huh. But the awareness did not get screwed up. The awareness did not get affected. Uh -huh. There is awareness, aware of these things happen. But there is also awareness of seeing that you've grown and you have matured and you have come to your full, full spiritual maturity. Uh -huh. and this awareness is still aware of that too. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. Right. Now, rather than having your attention on the story of psychologically i got damaged in childhood yeah. now shift your attention bring your attention from this uh -huh. to here bring your attention on the awareness uh -huh. there is a commonality here something never changed uh -huh. there's okay. a mechanism there is something there's an element there is an intelligence here uh -huh that is aware of something wrong happen. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And now, 30 years after, you are looking at it and you're aware of something happened. But this power of awareness is not, is not changed. The power of awareness remains the same. Uh -huh. So, even though what happened has shaped you to become who you are today, uh, affected you, uh, but it never took away your power of being aware. It's true, but it's so painful. Yeah. It's so pain, painful, it's very painful. So, right now, are you experiencing the pain? Right now, not, but uh, maybe the rest of the day or... Okay, you know all right. Okay, mm. so, so when the rest of the day, when the pain comes, how does it come? In what form? I'm in the past all the time. My ideas are with the story all the time. Okay. All the time. Mm -hmm. okay. So you go to the past and then, then what happens? You go through the pain. Yeah. And then what happens? What's the next step happens? I blame my mother. Okay. And then, what, and then what happens? What happens after that? I can't forgive her. I, huh? can't, I can't forgive her. I understand. And then what happens? What's the next thing happens? Yeah, I'm getting sad. And uh, yeah, so sadness, sadness. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? So let's say half an hour from now, on, I'm using a hypothetical situation, okay? Yeah. Just, just stay with me because this is important for you and everyone else who's listening. Uh -huh. Because that's not only your story, this is going to help everyone. Uh -huh. Half an hour from now, on, okay? All of a sudden, this thought comes and this sadness comes. Your mom did this to you and, and she was abusive or angry and then you're sad then you're angry at her mm. right okay so then what happens after that you're sad and you're angry are you sad and angry for an hour for two hours for three hours for five hours how long does it last i don't know it depends sometimes not very long i go to work then i have some other things uh, in my head again right <laughs> right so then it goes away right yeah yeah it goes away yeah and yeah. then when it, when it goes away what happens you you become aware of it right yeah when it goes away and you feel good mm. you're aware that a dark cloud came yeah 
right? Yeah. Because the awareness remains the awareness. Uh -huh. Something here is aware that the dark cloud comes and uh -huh. it's raining and it's thunderstorms coming. And then uh -huh. when the dark cloud goes away, yeah. something's aware that it's gone, doesn't it? Yes, it's, uh, and I also, uh, what I uh, learned from you, I'm telling sadness is visiting me and uh, it will go again, you know, I know it will go again. So I just try to help myself uh, in this way. It's, it's yeah. very good. I can, I can use this uh, very often in my, in my daytime. Right. But the sex is coming always. It's always coming and it's disturbing me. Yes, yes. Yeah, I understand that. Now, I want you to shift your position with this issue. I want you to change your attitude. Because obviously you don't have a power on it not to come. Correct? It comes. Right. Yeah. Correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. So let's change our position. Why don't you welcome it to come? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Right. So when it comes, when mm. it comes next time, okay, mm. it all comes to come. And when it comes, can you simply stay in this place of observation, mm. observation of the sadness, observation, mm of the uncomfortable feelings yeah yeah observation of the blame even when you're blaming uh -huh. can you stay can you take one step back uh -huh. of the witness the place where the witness is you're simply step back and witnessing all these different steps mm -hmm. not pushing it away because this is where i believe that your downfall is when the dark cloud comes when these thoughts emotions arrive you want to get rid of them mm -hmm. or you forget and you get really entangled with them as if they're real mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. As if they're happening to you. Oh. Okay? They're happening to you. And they become very real. So oh. now you want to use different techniques to get rid of them. Oh. Okay? So oh. why don't we try this next time? But, uh, yeah, I, I, try, I would try that, yeah. Yeah. And but the first time... The first 10, 15 seconds may be very uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And you may go against your intuition or you may go against your body or your normal behavior resistance. Yeah. You may have to force yourself and hold yourself back mm -hmm. that when this uncomfortable thoughts and emotions coming, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. You may want to hold yourself back and stay into it. Mm -hmm. And l allow yourself for 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Allow yourself to feel uncomfortable. Allow yourself to feel rigid mm -hmm. without judging yourself or forcing yourself or resisting. Mm -hmm. And allow your body to go through what it goes through. But you're back here, you're simply watching and allowing. Uh -huh. Try that and let me know how that works next week. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, Anita. <laughs> I, I appreciate you having the courage to bring this up and sharing it because, yeah. because this helps uh, all our other friends, brothers, sisters, and listeners because this is not just your issue it's everybody else is dealing with it too oh, oh, i know <laughs> thank you you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> okay so i went a little bit over uh so nice to see you all 
Um, appreciate your being here, bringing your presence, your light, your beauty. And our uh, next academy is going to be next week. And those of you um, who are watching through Facebook or Instagram, uh, you can connect with me. My website is zaratustra.tv or connect on Instagram, Zaratustra 5 d or Facebook, or you're welcome to send us an email or come on the Academy page. If you have any comments, any suggestions, we're open to it. Uh, I do have an event coming, actually. I got invited, uh, for those of you who live in Los Angeles area, I will be at um, my friend's ranch, Gail Thackeray, and uh, I'm going to give a couple talks. I'll be there this Sunday, uh, the 27th of August, and uh, I believe, no, I'm sorry, not 27, I'm, I'm mistaking. Ms. Shishi, uh, let me bring you on. And maybe you know the information better than I do. That's going to be Sunday, Sunday 25th. Yeah, 25th. Yeah. So I'll be there after 4 o'clock. There's an all-day fair going on at her ranch from uh, 10 in the morning till uh, until the evening. And then there's going to be a fire ceremony. So Gail invited me to step in and give a couple lectures and join her at her fire ceremony, which is going to be at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to post the information. This was a last minute um, event that uh, I got invited to. But those of you who are in LA area, if you want to come over, it's free. It's free of charge. If you want to come by and say hello and uh, connect, you're welcome to. We're going to post the information on, on my Facebook and my website. Other than that, I don't have any other things happening except the Academy next week. We're in the process of uh, redoing my website. It's almost done. You're all welcome to check it out, zaratustra.tv. Uh, I think today we're going to disconnect the other website. So you, you, I know some of you try to come on this one and then you reroute it to the old one. But the old one is done. We're going to disconnect it today. And uh, you're welcome to check it, check it out. If you have any comments, suggestions, you're welcome to write to me. And, and I'm very open to it. Uh, the website is not complete. Um, we, have, we don't have our products yet up. And there's some other stuff that aren't up yet. But we're working on it vigorously. So hopefully by the end of the weekend, it will be uh, completely ready. And thank you again. God bless you. Namaste. And look forward to seeing you next week.